Hey, geeks. How's it going? It's uh, Donette Dave, uh, and welcome to show seven of Rockin' the Cold World with Donette Dave. I'm Dave McCarter, and I'm glad you're here. Um, uh, sorry we had a couple little little technical difficulties in the in the beginning, and so we started a little late today. Uh, but that's okay, because I've got a great interview for you guys. You're going to love it. And uh, it's with uh, somebody I've known for almost two decades now, Mark Miller from DevExpress. And, and uh, you know, I would say that you got to watch the show because Mark is a, is a, a ver it's genius, if you ask me. And, uh, um, you know, and the, the sessions I've gone to of his way back, you know, 15 plus years ago, I still remember. So I hope you watch the show because, uh, you're going to learn something from it for sure. So stick around. Um, I'll reward you at the end with uh, giving away a $50 gift certificate to Amazon.com and also some free software from DevExpress. So I hope you stick around. So let's get the show going. Oops, I'm on the wrong screen. There we go. So welcome to the show. I'm glad you're here. Um, I'm in a pretty good mood today because um, not only is it raining outside, which it doesn't rain very much here in San Diego, California, but the candidate that I voted for, President Juan, yay. Okay, so I'm going to be happy for today. Uh, we'll see what happens tomorrow in this crazy uh, election that we've had here in America. But anyway, so I'm glad you're here. And, you know, I want to keep saying over and over again, this show is for you. So I, I want to make it the best it can be. And the best way for you to let me know is to email me. I want to hear from you. I still haven't gotten an email, the seven shows now. I still haven't gotten a single email from the audience going, hey, Dave, I like your show and I have a suggestion. Or, hey, Dave, I don't like your show and here's what you could do to make it better. So come on, send me some email. You know, I'm any email will be uh, um, accepted, uh, positive or negative. So it's okay. Uh, cause like I said, this show is for you. You know, I spend my Saturday mornings now, um, wanting to help you guys. And so, uh, email me. Okay. So we have some giveaways today. Um, the first one will be the, uh, well, the last one will be the Amazon uh, gift card at the very end of the show. Um, the first one, um, coming up next will be a C-sharp corner, uh, swag bag, uh, full of, uh, t-shirts, backpack, uh, and more, whatever Steve Sharp Corner has laying around uh, their offices, I guess, and they put it in there and ship it to you. So, and the way to win it this time is super, super easy. Trying to make this stuff easy for you guys. Um, and then at the very end, everybody's going to get a copy of Code Rush from DevExpress. And, uh, you know, Mark will be showing some things from Code Rush uh, in today's interview. So, um, I hope you download a copy as soon as the meeting's over. Don't do it during the meeting because then you won't watch it. So uh, do it afterwards, okay? So here's how you win the C-Sharp Corner gift bag. The first person that posts a photo of my interview with Mark and me today coming up next wins. So do a screen grab and uh, uh, text it on Twitter to uh, C-Sharp Corner and also tag it with Rock and Code World not rocking the code world because I took the out because I figured it was just extra word. So uh, C-sharp corner and rocking code world, okay? Easy. So get your screen grab software ready. <laughs> um, so on today's show, I'm really, really happy to uh, be interviewing Mark Miller. He's the chief scientist um, at uh, for ID, uh, tools and division at Developer Express. I've known Mark uh, for quite a while now, almost two decades. And uh, like I said, he used to come uh, to the user group that I ran for 20 years. And like I said, you know, he's, I still remember those um, sessions, you know, and, uh, and just like, you know, the first sessions I ever saw from Alan Cooper back in the 90s, I still remember today, uh, almost every day. And uh, Mark Miller's uh, uh, talk, uh, you know, listening to Mark Miller is the same way. You're going to remember it, you know, and uh, especially when he talks about the science of great uh, design uh, later in the interview. Um, 
it's that's the stuff I really love for Mark because he's just a genius on that stuff. So, um, so um, let me read his bio. Mark Miller is a six-year C Sharp uh, Microsoft MVP and is one of the world's leading experts on interface design. Mark is chief architect of the IDE tools division at Developer Express and is a visionary force behind Code Rush and a creator of science of great design courses. Mark streams live almost every day, uh, C Sharp Corner and TypeScript coding questions on his Twitch channel. So make sure you uh, uh, check out uh, Mark on Twitch. Not right now, because he's on right now. Uh, listen to my show. Uh, but after my show, go check him out. And uh, Mark is also a, a top-ranked speaker in conferences around the world and has been creating tools for software developers for nearly four decades. So, you know, creating tools for, uh, you know, .NET and uh, Visual Studio marks the man. So uh, this, is going, this is going to be a fun interview, very informative. You guys are going to love it. Um, but I will tell you uh, really quick that um, this is show seven, and this is the first... Uh, show that we had to uh, pre-record the interview uh, with the guest. And and the reason for that is because Mark Miller has a show on right now. And so he he could never make the show. And so we actually recorded it last night. So I'm going to sit back and watch the interview for the first time. I get to watch my own interview. <laughs> this should be fun. And uh, so don't forget to uh, tweet out a picture to win the uh, C Sharp Corner gift bag. And with that, uh, Here's the interview. You're going to love it. I'd like to welcome to the show my good friend, Mark Miller. Welcome, Mark. Uh, glad to be here. Uh, good to be here, Dave. How are you doing? Okay. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. You done? Just hanging out over here on the other side of you. I'm right here, <laughs> and you're over there. There we go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> We're pros. It's like we're in the same Locking room. Two heads. No, I'm over here. I'm over here. Right over here. There you go. So how's it going down there in Costa Rica? Uh, it's pretty good. I'm, yeah. uh, you know, I've got, uh, it took me a while to get my setup to uh, support high-speed streaming, live streaming coding from Costa Rica, but mm -hmm. we made that work. I've got a nice uh, studio office here, and, um, and I'm really enjoying it. So I'm having a great cool. time. How's uh how's the pandemic down there? I haven't heard anything about Costa Rica. It, they were doing really well for a while, and then you know everybody's just kind of like, all right, and you know I think they're kind of uh, gave up a little bit, a little bit like you've seen in other places, and yeah. uh, numbers went back up. Um, mm -hmm. But we were doing great early on. I like yeah. that a lot. Of, but you know I think we're looking at uh, we're looking at, they've opened it up to tourism again. And so I think we're looking at another, you know, uh, it's going to get harder before it gets easier. Yeah, I think so too. It's like, you know, whenever I hear, I see little stories about, you know, letting cruise ship, uh, cruise ships go again, I'm going, Oh, come on. I mean, yeah. they, they were bad before the pandemic, right? <laughs> you know, and, you're right. <laughs> so during a pandemic, that's just insane. Yeah, no, you know? I, I would agree with you. It's like it's like <laughs> a, the biggest petri dish I can imagine. Yes, is a cruise ship. Yeah, I don't. Horrible. That's, that's not where I want to be. I'm an introvert, so I want to stay inside. But I've yeah. got my wife and my daughter, who both are living here still, and uh, well, my youngest daughter hasn't. Got, she's not old enough to get out yet, and they are both extroverts, and so it's hitting mm. them really hard. Yeah. Um, you know. But um, but uh, myself and my son are more introverts, and so we're like you know pretty much having the time of our lives. Oh darn, <laughs> we can't go to another party. That's really too bad. <laughs> right. We'll just have to stay inside and work. Oh darn, I don't have to, don't have to drive for a week. Oh dang, yeah, yeah. It sucks. Yeah, yeah no, I, I th that was actually one of the things that really surprised me. I was like, oh my gosh, we're saving so much money in gasoline bills. Oh right? yes. So yeah. I still we still got a car that's burning gasoline. And, uh, and, and we're saving hundreds of dollars, you know, closer to maybe, you know, eight, $600 a month, uh, yeah. because we're not driving as much as we used to, yeah. uh, just because there's so few events, things like that. Yeah. Me too. So, it's same thing. It's, I've been saving money during all this, of course, you know, especially with not yeah. being able to travel and, you know, right. that stuff. it's, yeah, it's right. Yeah. So, um, 
I was going to ask first. So, you know, um, every, every week on the show, we give away a copy of Code Rush, and I tell everybody that, you know, it's my favorite refactoring tool. It's the only one I use. And so, so I hope people are downloading it. You know, I don't know. You guys know that. But, um, but what's new and exciting in Code Rush land? Like um, big, big fe feature stuff coming out soon. Yeah, no, I think there's really nothing that I can talk about with regards to what's coming out. Um, mm. the, 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 actually, the, the latest, most interesting thing that I have been looking at is actually for VS Code. Mm. Uh, and it is, uh, we're talking about putting the Code Rush templates, moving those over to a, a standalone plugin for VS Code. We've mm. already got two free plugins out there uh, for VS Code uh, mm. already. Um, uh, one of them is uh, Rush Nav. Um, that you can get I can uh, I might just, I don't know if it makes sense for me to show that or not but I'll just in case I'm gonna start up vs code here uh, okay. um, let's see is that gonna do it that looks like it's gonna do it let me get my screen up here so you can see it um, and let's see what button do I hit it's gonna be th this one right there there you go and so here you can see uh, it's here. Rush Nav is one of these extensions, mm -hmm. which allows uh, navigation inside of, of VS Code, similar navigation features that we uh, already have in, uh, in Visual Studio. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, we also have uh, Rush Code, which is, this is the new one that is gonna be coming out soon, which allows for template expansion and things like mm -hmm. that. We're just kind of looking through that um, uh, with regard to Rush Nav, you can set bookmarks. Um, uh, let's see if we can, uh, I was going to click on it. I was expecting to see details here, but I'm thinking it's because uh, I have, uh, um, it's because I have installed locally as opposed to another way to do so that normally you see the, uh, you see right here, you see the details that are inside of it, but it allows you to, mm -hmm to do uh, to drop bookmarks and uh, as other navigational features. And then Rush Code is the new one that we're working on, which is uh, the Code Rush templates. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were just talking about this uh, a couple of days ago. And we have some templates that are out here, but we don't have all of them. And I was saying, well, we've got to get all of them. And we're talking about the, uh, the problems inside of Visual Studio Code. Mm -hmm. that uh, stops us from doing everything that we could do in Visual Studio. And, um, and, uh, and so we're working, on, we're working on workarounds to get around those problems. But yeah. um, one of the cool things about it is, like if I come in here and I say, I type in, for example, um, uh, well, let's see, what can I, what's a good demo here? Let's see if I can do, um, well, I'm not, yeah, let's see. Oh, because I'm in TypeScript, I have to do F. There we go. Okay, so I'm in TypeScript right here, not in C Sharp, so I was trying to do mm -hmm. some C Sharp stuff, but <laughs> in TypeScript here, if I hit the letter F, you can see the in, in IntelliSense I've got right there, it's uh, showing me that there's a there's a coder's template there, and mm -hmm. that's what it looks like right there. There's the expansion wow. on that. So if I want that, I'll just hit the tab key like that, and it'll give it to me. We've got the, um, uh, the text fields, just like we had before, where we can... Uh, type in something here like uh, my proc or my function, whatever that is, hit mm -hmm. enter, uh, call this P1, hit enter, and uh, maybe change this right here to something else. Um, and let's see, I don't think, yeah, this other template that I wanted to use here isn't here yet, but it's this is something we're working on here. So yeah. we can type in, you know, whatever that, whatever that piece is that we wanna do here, same thing here, and come down and do something down here. So we've got those templates in there, um, those are, uh, those are something we're working on. We're about to release it. So if you're in Visual Studio Code, look for that. These are free right now. Uh, Rush Core is required by both of these right here, Rush Nav mm -hmm. and uh, Rush Code. Um, that's uh, something we're working on. With regards to um, with regards to Visual Coders for for Visual Studio, um, we are actually looking at um, the kind of the attack we're taking now is more strategic rather than, um, than uh, or actually, I guess I should maybe re rephrase it. It's, well, I don't know. It's more strategic than the big feature approach. So mm. we've done like big features in the past. And like, I'll show you like uh, an example of a big feature over here in Visual Studio. 
Uh, let me stop running this one right here. Let's go to, let's bring a browser and let's go, go for uh, Pythagorean theorem. If I spell that right, I theorem, I think like that. And uh, we got some results right in here. I want to go out to Wikipedia's. And the whole reason I'm going out here is because I want to get like a picture like this. So I'm just going to come over and copy that image right there. And then I'm going to come into the source code and I'm going to put a comment right here and I'm going to paste. And that's how easy it is to get an image inside of Code Rush. So you weren't showing us. Oh, jeez. <laughs> there you go. Back up a little bit. Here you go. You Psych. <laughs> Let's do it again. I'm sorry about that. It's Here okay. we go. I'll I'll do it with something completely different. Give me another <laughs> algorithm. What's another one that we can do? I know I'll do uh, area uh, of a sphere. Let's do that. So I'm going to go over to find area of a sphere. Uh, do I get Wikipedia? Jump over there. Fine. What the heck? I'll just copy this image right here. Come over here in the code, and I'll do this like that. And I can then paste that image right there in the code. So it maintains the transparency if such if something is such as there. Um, I can resize it. I can change the scale of it, that sort of thing. Um, I can even uh, come in and crop the image, for example, right? And it acts and behaves just like a normal image would inside of a Visual Studio. And that's an example of like a big feature, right? To make this work, to it took a lot of effort, right? To make it as simple as what you've just seen, yeah. right? I come into your into my comment. I can take an image from anywhere. I can even, would this be ridiculous? Probably. I can take a screenshot of a running app mm -hmm. is what I can do. Uh, and I can paste so in the screenshot. Just like documentation purposes or, you know what I'm saying? You're, you know, I, I, get, I get the question. The question is, why would you want to do that? So yeah. I do it. I do this in a couple, in a couple, um, in a couple places. Uh, let me open up. I'll show you some places where I actually am using this. Jump over here. I'm opening up a new instance of Visual Studio. How I'm many sure monitors to, do you have? I have four right now on my <laughs> machine, but I've actually got I've got one, two, three. Yeah, I've got three computers and four monitors. And I have the ability to kind of switch oh, them around a back little and bit. Forth. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I want to go, I've got something in here called the die roller.ts. And mm -hmm. I've got an image in here. I'll give you an example of an image that I use. I've got a couple images throughout here. Let's see if I can find it. Here it is right here. Mm -hmm. So here I've got some complex math that's going on. In fact, I think I have the same image right up here. So the, the one below is an older method, and here's a newer version of the method right here. But mm -hmm. I kept the image here. So here's an example where I've got some complex math, and I want to show what's going on in the math right here. And uh, if we if we kind of zoom in on this right here, you can see uh, that in the diagram, this value, mm -hmm. left, right distance between prints, that's equal to um, a variable that's inside of here uh, left, right distance between prints right there. Mm -hmm. So what it does is it shows me visually what the pieces are yeah. inside of that. So sometimes oh. I'll do so I'll do something like this. Um, <laughs> let me go find a uh, sprite proxy. I think is that what I want to go? Whoops, not there. I want to go to um, sprite proxy. I think I'm gonna go to that class. I think there's one here too. And it may not be here, it may actually be in, yeah, it's in base animation. Hold on, give me a second. Base animation. Is that where I wanted to be? I feel like I'm in the right spot. There, there's something. Mm -hmm. Here's another example where I have things that are complex that I have to solve. And, and it's hard work to figure out the math for it. Mm -hmm. So I visually create it like in PowerPoint, I take a screenshot and I come in and paste it. And, and so now this, for example, is for an animation that has frames mm -hmm. at the beginning and then it has multiple segments here, segment one, segment two, and segment three. Each of those segments can go in a loop. So I can choose which one of those to switch to and this kind of final end animation. And this is used to create really smooth animations where something appears and then maybe loops. Um, this one in particular is used for an hourglass. 
to make mm -hmm. sand in an hourglass appear to animate and you just give it whatever time you want it to, to take and it'll take yeah. that long to go through. Wow, that's cool. So where's the image actually stored? Um, the image is stored in a folder that is uh, off of the solution. Mm. So you and, reference a, a, a stored image. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so and so this is, this is the file name mm. right here. Uh, the file name is a, um, uh, it's a CRC of what's in the image. Mm -hmm. So if you try to paste the same image a second time, we'll see that you're already pasting that, that same image. Yeah. Right. And uh, so we won't, you know, duplicate up the images. So you can have this same piece referenced several times if you want to. That might be useful if you want to put, for example, your logo inside all your source code. Mm -hmm. Right. And anybody who has code rush opens it up, they're going to see your logo right there. For example, these values over here are values for scaling and for uh, recite uh, for cropping. Mm -hmm. um, I oh, can also see doesn't have code rush. Do they just see those numbers yep. you were just showing? Yeah, they see that right there. And they can even go into the folder and go find the image if they want to, if they don't mm -hmm. have code rush. Yeah. Right. So that's not too bad. No. Um, I wanted to I wanted to go into there's one more class I wanted to show because this one I have actually used several times. This next image I'm going to show you. There it is. So here's a method called draw image mm -hmm. and it's on context. And so if you're a TypeScript developer, you may have used this before. It has eight parameters. Well, actually nine. The parameters are called SX, SY, SW, SH, DX dy, dw, and dh. Understanding what these are and what they mean visually has always thrown me. And I've had to go mm -hmm. outside and bring up the documentation when I need to use it. And mm -hmm. so I throw this in here. So to answer your question, right, what, what am I doing? What am I using images for mm -hmm. frequent that I really depend on? It is things like this, yeah. where I have, I have some code that is incredibly hard to use or to conceive of that's mm -hmm. difficult or complex. And I have a way of, of showing it visually that, and, and that's what I do. So I'll, I'll, I'll use it like that. But I can also do things um, that you might find interesting like this. Let's go uh, find the, uh, the Dev Express logo. Well, you've just given me an idea it was in my open source project, put my, lo put my logo at the top of all the class files. Right, so let's take this. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna copy this image, right? I'm going to come up here to the top. I'm going to put a, a comment and just paste it in. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's my DevExpress logo. Now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say link. And in link, I'm going to, uh, let me just drag it. Whoops. Hold on. Grab the wrong thing. Uh, I'm going to come in here and say, let's go to uh, devexpress.com like that. Or mm -hmm. maybe devexpress.com slash code rush, mm -hmm. for example. We'll go to DevExpress first. So I just, that's all I do. I just do that. Notice I can also hook up a Coderous command or a Visual Studio command. So I could, for example, have a button in the file that says build if I wanted to. Mm -hmm. With that there, now notice I get a, a, a finger, right? Mm -hmm. When I'm here, a little hand icon. When I click it, it takes me to that link. Wow. So it's a kind of a great way to do that. Now I can also to kind of share, to, to kind of brand your source code mm -hmm. and to then get people to go somewhere if you want them to do that. Yeah. I can I can also uh, well, guess what I'm doing tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I can also by in case you didn't know this, you can also put a back tick right here, and mm -hmm. that will then uh, get rid of uh, the uh, leading the leading um, comment delimiters when it's just displaying it. So you can look do something just like that in your code, wow. right? So kind of cool the things that yeah. you can do with that. Now that's a, a big feature, right? That's a feature right. that takes many developers a lot of time. What we're doing now, though, is we are looking for opportunities to um, we're looking for opportunities to add a lot of value with a little bit of work, and we're mm -hmm. looking at these in across a wide variety uh, of areas, right? Of course, in the purview of Code Rush, which is help you write code faster, refactor code faster, right. debug faster, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. So we're looking for for big gains with a little bit of work, and that's what we're doing. We're just finding a lot of those and picking those up. Um, and, uh, and so I think that's why, that's part of the reason why I'm, uh, there's nothing big that we're working on that I can talk about because there really isn't anything big right now. It's just a bunch of strategic spots that we feel like we can do, bring higher value to the customers. Yeah.
well, you know, I've done, um, I've written or tweeted about that. You know, your test runner tools sometimes can, you know, cut the uh, the run of my uh, unit tests in half. You know, because it's so fast. You mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, well, that's yeah. We have in one, um, one contract I was on. You know, their unit test took me fifty six minutes, and which yeah. is crazy. And they were done wrong, but you know, on my machine, you know, it took fifty six minutes. So. And when that happened, I couldn't do anything on my machine because it taxed up the machine. So there's like every yeah. time I did unit tests, I had to do nothing but go watch TV or something. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the things that we added, um, that we added to uh, the test runner pretty early on, uh, let's bring the test, whoops, test, test runner. Uh, and we added uh, the ability to run assemblies in parallel, hmm. which mm -hmm. is this one right here. Right, it's that option. So we added that ability, and you can specify how many assemblies mm -hmm. to that you will allow to run in parallel. Mm -hmm. um, and this is, works for most people. Most people have tests that can run concurrently in multiple right. assemblies, right. and that's part of the reason why we're running so much faster is we have that ability to do that. But also, just flat out, the last time that we've done um, that we've done uh, a comparison against all the major competitors, um, we're still faster than everybody, including Visual Studio. Right, just yeah. built in in terms of running tests. So, so yeah, that um, it's good news. I'm glad it's uh, it's uh, working for you. Um, I know that uh, all of the developers at Developer Express um, are are using the uh, Coderish test runner as well uh, yeah. to uh, to test all their projects because it is the best uh, yeah. available option. So, well, it's it's my favorite, and, and especially in those contracts that have just a huge amount of unit tests to run. It saves me so much time, more time that I can more, do more work than everybody else. Sure, you know? sure. Uh, usually, I'm the only one that has it because, you know, I'll, I was just talking uh, my best friend here in San Diego, Woody Pewitt. He, I think you know Woody. Um, yes, Woody used to work for us at Dev Express. Yeah. yeah, I had dinner with him last night, and we were talking about just you know the struggle of getting companies to, you know, pony up some money will save them so much time. You know, it's crazy um so you know when i was uh, preparing for this uh uh interview i was i was going through uh your blog and you were blogging a bunch about um code rot server uh, can you tell me what that is and what it's for coder server is an uh, azure devops uh extension add-in that you can uh that if you've got azure devops you mm -hmm. can add that into your process uh, I don't think I can do a real quick demo of that. I don't, I'm not prepared no, to do that okay. right now, but it is um, the essence of what it does is it will do, it will run test cases for you. So you can put this into your build process, right? So I want to run code rush, have code rush run the test cases. You can analyze the source code, do static code and an analysis on the, mm -hmm. uh, on your source code. Um, uh, and there's like a third thing that I'm like uh, totally, Totally forgetting about here. I'm, I'm uh, code analysis, test running, and something else. I can't remember what the, <laughs> what the third thing is. It's similar. It's similar to the uh, the code analysis. I'm going to bring it up on a website here before I get um, you know in serious trouble with the Code Rush server team. Um, <laughs> let's see what we, let's see what we got here to spark my memory here. Um, give it to me. Give it to me. Well, let's see. It's analysis. Oh, code coverage. That's my third one right hmm. there. So code coverage. So it gives you a sense of code coverage. That's the piece I wasn't remembering. Apologies to the team. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Yeah. So um, I can give you a, I can bring this up over here. You can kind of see some screenshots of it right here. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is an uh, example of what the code coverage UI interface looks like. Um, your test results, that sort of thing. And it it tracks these numbers for every build you do. All right. So you can get a sense of trends like you know, am I getting more code coverage or am I getting less? Mm -hmm. Is my um, is my diagnostic summary getting better or is it getting worse? Right? right? Are my test cases passing more or failing more? Yeah. Right? So you can you it, and you can compare, for example, you can see a little bit in the screenshot right up here. It's actually saying here's what we built at and here's the baseline we're comparing it against. And you can move these around. So you can say, okay, I want to compare yesterday's with last week's, 
right? Something along those lines. So you can select which one, which two you're comparing, and it'll show you the deltas. The deltas are showing up uh, right up here mm -hmm. like that. Uh, and so that's that's Code Rush Server. Um, wow. Yeah, they're all with good. Code Rush? Uh, yeah, right now Code Rush Server is free. Really? Right, so, yeah, Code Rush wow. Server is free. Rush Code is free. Right. The, 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 the we showed for VS for Visual Studio Code. Uh, and we're going to come up with the templates plugin, which is free as well. Now, Code Rush Server is uh, still like in uh, kind of a beta early experience. Mm -hmm. So that's also why it's free right yeah. now. There's a chance it will charge for it in the future. Um, we haven't announced anything on that. But right now, it's uh, it's out there. And if you uh, are using uh, uh, Azure and you, you want to get a, a tool in there and you don't want to pay very much money for it, it's <laughs> zero. It's zero. So, wow. so, so install that and take a look at that and see if you like it. You can also run it standalone as well. You can integrate it into your build process. Um, there's a wow. way to do that. So if you need to do I that. I got to check that out more. And since it's free, I maybe be able to sell it to my team at work because they don't like to buy anything yeah. as usual. And so if I say it's free, they go, hey. Yeah. So um, I think, th yeah, the way you do it is you're, you're like, you're like, uh, so we got to get a tool, guys. It's going to help us out. We really got to do it. And then, and uh, but but you know the cost. I'm not sure if you're going to be okay with the cost. And they're all like, oh, oh, oh. And then you're like, it's free. It's free. <laughs> get it. Um, and then they'll be like, yay! And party music and all of that yeah. stuff will happen. I don't know. That's kind of what I envision. It's like well, the biggest problem, at least my team, where I I'm a I'm a contractor and. And they, you know, it pre until recently couldn't even install software on their machines. And so, yeah. but now they do have that. And, but there's also security stuff. On it. No, I get that. I also feel like in some ways it could be a manager saying, hey, you know what? If we lock this down so no one can install software, we save yeah. a lot of money, yeah. right? It could be a financial decision as well. But, um, but yeah, I think that, you know, this whole idea of, you know, does it is a tool going to be what's the return of an investment on the tool? Yeah. Um, right now, Code Rush is is about uh, forty nine dollars if you're going to buy the community edition right. of right. Code Rush. Plus, you've got you're giving away what is your what did you say you're doing giving away? Are you giving away one copy? Is that what you oh. said? Or, no, uh, copy to everybody. Un unlimited copies. Mm -hmm. So if you're listening to this, this is here we go. We get to say it again. Ready, Dave? It's free. <laughs> it's free. It costs free. nothing. Nothing. Why yeah. not install it? Yeah. Uh, so, so now you get to you get to download it for free and and uh, take a look at Code Rush uh, if you yeah. want to. Code Rush is awesome, by the way. Um, yep. uh, I'm gonna. If you don't mind, do you mind if I do a demo of Code Rush? Yeah. 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 We have time. Do we have time? I'll just. I'll yeah. as long as it's interesting. And then I wanted to talk a little bit about the great your great design stuff and see what's going on in that world. And All right, we can do that. Uh, I'm gonna show you one feature, just one. How's that? Okay. Uh, I want to build this line of code, this bit right here, but I haven't built it yet. In fact, uh, let's just delete that. So I want to have source name come in. I, it's a string. Mm -hmm. I've already got a string called scene name. Now I could go type this in, right? I go string <laughs> source name, comma. comma. I could do all of that, right? But that will kill my spirit. <laughs> right. Instead, what I can do, and actually, I'm going to show you. I'm going to sneak in a second feature. There's a coderish feature that allows me to essentially instantly grab a portion of a camel case name. So mm -hmm. I just grabbed uh, scene. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I'm going to use a feature called duplicate smart duplicate selection. That's the feature I want to show you. So I'm going to hit <laughs> shift enter here now. What do you think is going to happen when I hit shift enter, Dave? Do you know this feature? Have you seen it? I have not. You're going to love it. Then watch this. Shift enter. I'm waiting. Oh, that's all I did is shift enter. Start, shift enter and then you just then type typing. in source like this. Oh, yeah. And then I hit enter and I'm out at the end. It's that oh. fast and easy. It sees that you're on a parameter. Smart duplicate selection works with all kinds of things, including like, uh, I don't know, something like this. Let's do property smart duplicate. Or... Le What'd you say? Property names or... Yeah, anything, any code. If I don't have anything selected, and I just hit Shift Enter. Look what it did. Oh, it did the it duplicated the line. Yeah. Duplicated the line. It also changed its <laughs> Tailspire NDI because it saw that I'd already previously done that right there. Wow. Right? If I come out to the end, let's do something more exciting. Let's do something more exciting. Let's do this. Let's create. Uh, let's do an enum. 
should mm. work with an enum. So I'm going to create an enum called uh, flavors like that. And I'm going to come down here and I'm going to say the first element is going to be chocolate. Do you like chocolate, Dave? Yes. <laughs> okay. I'm going to set the value equal to one. And I'm just, I'm using the template still right now, but I'm going to stop maybe the template. I'm going to stop using the template. And instead, I'm just going to hit shift enter here. So shift enter. Uh, do you like vanilla, Dave? Sure. Okay. I'm going to change that to a two. I'm going to hit shift enter again. Notice now it's it mm -hmm. sees it's given me a three. Right. I'm going to say uh, strawberry. No, you want to do the one, two, yeah. But I want this to be a four instead. Hmm. So I change it to a four. I'm going to hit shift enter again, and now look what it's done. It's gone. Uh, it's given me an eight over there, and this last one will be like maybe rocky road, like that. I shift enter again. Look what it's doing. It's mm -hmm. just duplicating each time. I'll just call this Rocky Road 2 and keep just demonstrating. Now look what it's doing. It's even duplicating the name because it sees <laughs> that the name is, is going up too. Right, right. And this works with hex. It works with binary, um, all kinds of things. It's smart wow. duplicate selection. Um, and it's generally pretty good in terms of writing code for you. Um, sure. I'll often see things like I'll have a line of code. Uh, this won't compile, but I'll, I'll have something that says like, um, like uh, move to, and it'll be like my um, position dot X, right? Like that. And I'll just come over here and I'll uh, shift, shift enter on that. And I'll hit enter there and I'll change this to a Y and then I'll hit shift enter and it gives <laughs> me the Z, right? Like that. See what's happening? Uh, yeah. yeah. So it's it works on parameters, works on arguments. It works on selections, selected mm -hmm. groups of lines, and it works on single lines without any selection. It's a great coderish feature. That's all I'll show. I don't want to, you know, get too crazy right. in there. But you can get it for free. I'm not selling anything, kids. Just free. downloaded it. Just download it. What a deal. The kids love free stuff. Uh, yeah. Also, <laughs> well, okay. You would, Let's go to Science of Great UI. Let's do that. Yeah. I'll give you a link at the end where you can connect with me. Mm -hmm. live, like what? I'm live streaming six days a week. Six. Jeez. Six days a week. So you can connect with me live. Is that right? Six? Wait, at least five. Five days a week. Um, and uh, you can connect with me live and ask a coderist question at any time. I'm writing code live, yeah. and if you have a coderist question, you can jump in and say, how do I do this? And I will stop everything and answer your question. That's a little mm -hmm. crazy, too. We'll see how long that lasts, you know, but um, yeah. what's well, now that you've told me, I'm going to start writing down my questions right now. All right. Let's talk about science of great UI. Yeah. Where do you want to go there, buddy? I don't know what's going on with that. I, you know, I just, you know, wanted to see if you wanted to talk a bit about it just because, you know, I think the first times we met is when you came to the user group here in San Diego and, and, uh, and you talked about this stuff and, and, and then your talk, uh, your talks back then still kind of haunt me, you know, and, but in good. a good way, right? So, yeah, no, that's good. It sounds like you, there's retention. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's good. That's important. Um, and, and it's not but, about code. It's just about, you know, the, the right way to do, you know, user interfaces and how users think and how do you do your, you need to make things easier for them, not harder. Sure. That's exactly what we're talking about. And, and so ultimately, look, the good design is about, in general, is about reducing load for things that we want users to do all the time. When I say reducing load, I mean reducing cognitive load, reducing physical load, amount of effort, distance I have to travel, that sort of thing, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> uh, and emotional load to some degree as well, right? We're reducing that. However, you know, of course, with every guideline, there's a however. Let's say there's something that you are going to allow people to do that might be dangerous, might have consequences, right? In that case, we want to increase the load, maybe make the path to that task longer, right? Mm -hmm. For example, are you sure you <laughs> want to delete your entire hard disk? Are you really you know? sure? Maybe. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Type in the word delete if you really do or something like that, right? So in general, it's about lowering load, right. oh, you know, because most of us are releasing software where we want everybody to use, you know, all the features of the software. Mm -hmm. But if there are consequences, it's the exception to the rule. Right. I'll give you a, a section of the of the course here uh, that I that I think is a really foundational, fundamental rule, uh, and it's uh, we'll talk about superheroes I know things about, 
And I know about a superhero called Batgirl and the Hulk and Scarlet uh, Witch right there and Superman, right? Those are the superheroes I know things about. And what do I know? I know their powers. I know their secret identities. And I know their chances of beating me in a fight, right? Which is important <laughs> to know if you're a guy like me, Dave, right? Oh, Dave's up over there. Hold on. Dave, like that. You're, you're, it's important to know, uh, you know, because, you know, I, I got to always be aware of my odds uh, at any time. So yeah. now let's organize what we know. So I'm going to create a table and I'm going to put superhero, I'm going to put my superheroes, list their names in this column. I'm going to put their main power in this column. I'm going to put their secret identity in this column and the chances of beating me here. And so we'll start with Batgirl. Her main power is martial arts. Her secret identity is Barbara Gordon and chances of beating me in a fight. Okay, probably no <laughs> surprise, kids. The Hulk, the Incredible Hulk, main power, Hulk smash. Bruce Banner, secret identity. Uh, chances of beating me in a fight, 50%. If I catch him as Bruce Banner and I just, uh. you know, bop him from behind on the back of the head and run, I think I can, I'm going to call that a win. That's what I'm going to call that. Uh, we got Scarlet Witch and we got Superman. Now, what I want to do here, and, and this is the question to, to you, is can you separate this presentation here? I'll get rid of that Code Rush logo at the top here so we can see everything. Can you separate this presentation into two groups of information? One group uh, we want to call um, uh, high importance very important information. And another group, we wouldn't call that low importance information. And I'll pause for a second and let you look at that and think about how you would just separate this into two groups. You mean assign high or low to each group? Is that what you're Yeah, asking? exactly. What's the important information? What's the unimportant information in the presentation behind me? That's the question. If you want to answer, I'll let you answer it. Sorry, you're over there again. If you want to answer it, Dave, you can. If you, what do you think? If you want to answer it, and you can also say, "I feel it's a trap, Mark." I know. <laughs> hey, I, I would say the most important one is probably the secret identity. Okay, so I love your answer. It's yeah. absolutely wrong, but I <laughs> love I love the answer because it's exactly what everybody is kind of we look for. It illustrates what we're looking for, right? Hey. But it's not, it's not it. And let me show you how I did how I did this. This is the two groups I broke this into. I said the lines are not as important, and the text is super important. And Dave's you're like, it was a trick question. I knew it. I shouldn't have stepped into the trap. Um, that's it right there. It's a trick question because we don't think about it, and it's a trick question to design. It's designed to haunt you, mm. right, Dave? It's going to get you to think about this, right? You're going to now, in the future, you're going to think, hey, wait, lines are actually part of the presentation too, just mm -hmm. like the text is. Um, so now we talk. About, I want to talk about emphasis. So emphasis is the ability to make some text or make some part of your presentation appear important. Mm -hmm. I, I can emphasize by bolding it. I can emphasize by uh, adding saturation, like making mm -hmm. it red, for example. Um, I can emphasize by making it larger. Well, if we look at this particular presentation and we kind of zoom in here and we kind of zoom in even closer, we see that the thickness of the lines right up there, there you can see it, and the width of the font stroke, they are the same. Mm -hmm. And the contrast is exactly the same. Mm -hmm. So from a standpoint of conveying what information is important, this presentation is saying the lines are as important as the text. Okay, but we just grouped them into two different groups. So once we do that, we can now start to play in different directions and see what happens. Um, here, I've got emphasis the same everywhere. Over here, I've inverted it. I've made things that were not important seem very important. Mm -hmm. And things that were very important seem unimportant. Right. And then down here, I've gone the other way, the other right way. here. Yeah. Now I did, I took a little bit of a shortcut here in that I, or I took an extra step here and that I decided that the headers were maybe a little less important than mm -hmm. the data. So I, I added a third, a third group and I emphasized it accordingly. But the question is, which of these three do you find easier to read? And if you're the like most, on the bottom. Yeah. If you're like most people, this is easiest to read, mm -hmm. right? In fact, if you compare the two side by side, you start to realize the problem. It's without the comparison, you don't really see it. But if you compare the two, it's like, oh, okay, 
I got it. Mm -hmm. And so the guideline here is that you want emphasis to always match importance. Right. That's what you want to do. So that's like, uh, that's an example piece that came from, uh, that comes from uh, my research in the course. Um, uh, I'll give yeah, you another. I Good. I, you know, I try to do these same kind of things. I always struggle with it, you know, because, you know, we're coders, you know, I'm a coder, not a graphic artist. And, but, you know, when my presentations I do, and I have, you know, my presentations look, you know, a lot different than most people, but at least when it comes to the slide, you know, the informational slides themselves, you know, I've tried over the years to do kind of what you're saying, you know, you know, put as little on the slide as possible, you know, make what's important um, stand out more, right? Like the header, the header, like at the top of this screen here, you know, on a slide is usually less important than the information in the slide, right? Yeah. So why make, that. The, why make the header huge, right? Yeah. Even in this you know, in this live stream, you know, even the rock and the code with Donna Dave is not huge. It's just kind of medium size. You know, it doesn't take up the whole thing. And, you know, yeah, not too overpowering, I guess. You know, right. I, I have an example that's kind of an interesting thing that you can do. Uh, let me bring it up. It's looking like this. And you can combine a large size. Oops, here, let's go back here a second. Uh, you can combine a large size with low contrast to attract the eye and let it move on. So here in this example, let's just, I just want to come in and uh, let's make this a little bit bolder of a font here. Um, can we know oh, that's already bolded? What is going on? Myriad Pro Light. Uh, yeah, it's not going to look good. There's no way to get this fast. There we go. I can use that. There's a better example right there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is something that you can do where you have large size, but low contrast. Right. You can do this for a, in a stylistic way, mm -hmm. right? Or you can do it in, in a less like it is now, right? Where it's stylistic, where it's got a different font and it's very big, but because I've lowered the contrast, it, it's okay, right? Mm -hmm. And what it allows you to do is get the eyes there and let them move on. So you can actually kind of comb combine uh, conflicting ways of, of emphasis or de-emphasis you can combine those in a way to kind of still achieve balance and still get something that kind of works. So I like this as a, you know, we're talking about you, you yeah, know, why, yeah. why, but watch how bad it looks. Look at how bad it looks. If I come in and I change it, hold it, right. If I, if I make it like Black. this, yeah. right now it's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Right. It doesn't work. So you can kind of get between those two is what you can do. So well, let me go ahead. But just want to stop you there for a second. So, uh, I want to talk about, I guess, PowerPoint. Is there a, a text effect in PowerPoint that basically like allows you to make it bold, but then after like two or three seconds, fade it down to like half? Uh, right? Not really. Yeah. Uh, so you're talking about going from bold to, from a bold emphasis to a uh, normal emphasis. Is what you're talking well, about. Well, no, I no, like a hundred percent down to you know, like a hundred percent opacity down to like fifty percent or I some see. other contrast or brightness change. Yeah, I don't you think do, so. You know what I'm saying? I it'll, don't... it'll be good to like start the slide off with so. the big bold, but have it go down to like you know, half like half like you have here or a different yeah. color, you yeah, know, after you you know, three seconds or something. No, I get that. You can do this. So th this would be a cheap way to solve that. You duplicate, right? You change oh, it to whatever it, yeah, yeah, you want it, it to out. be. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and then add an animation uh, that says, uh, oh, I want with the exit animations. And I want yeah, to fade that can it. be used like with a master, uh, I, master page thing, I don't think, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. you'd have to do this yeah. manually for each one. Yeah. 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 And there it is. It's it's happening at yeah. the end now. Yeah, yeah I don't. Sorry, I, everybody. I didn't mean this to turn into a PowerPoint. <laughs> Let's figure out something to do in PowerPoint. It's, it's yeah, okay. no. I was just curious. That's how. This is how you do it. So it's there, and then it goes away like that. Yeah. So I, I still wouldn't. It's still too dark. I would do it as a uh, 
uh, a different color on this. Just as a, a tip, I would come in and say, let's use the eyedropper, grab this color right here. And let's see if that, how that looks. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of there. I'd change yeah. this, the fade speed so it would go slower. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that kind of do this. Whoops. That's not what I wanted to do. I want to take that edge, do something like that. And now look at it. Yeah. Yeah. So now, we kind of do yeah, something like that. Yeah. When the bottom comes in, then it, it goes down. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, there's kinds of some things that you can do there. Um, something else I just occurred to me, I should show oh, there you. There gives me something to do for my pet, my PowerPoint templates for next year. <laughs> there you go. Um, I want to go out here to GitHub and uh, my account's out at Miller Mark. And I wanted to talk about the Highlight Explorer. Actually, maybe I'll talk about a couple things in here. The Highlight Explorer, there's source code out here for a tool. Let me go load it up. Uh, that's going to be out in Dropbox, my tools, and there it is right here. So here's the, this is the Highlight Explorer. And I originally built it as a way to kind of be able to figure out what's the background highlighting color going to be to be able to make sure everything passes uh, WCAG 2.0 guidelines. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so that's kind of what the goal of this is. And it, and, but I can also say, well, you know what? I'm not going to do highlighting. I just want to make sure my text is easy to read. Right. And, and what's happening is if I take my foreground, which is my text and, and notice I'm only going to change the hue. I'm going to go from here and watch what happens. I start to drag it over here. We are getting all these red kind of X's here, meaning we're getting a fail. I think if mm -hmm. I get it all the way to that yellow, we should get, there it is right there. I've got like a full on fail in terms of contrast. The text is not high enough contrast yeah. right there. Um, I can even make it worse by saying, let's make the even brighter. And you can see oh. my, my, my contrast ratio is changing here. Yeah. Um, another example. I think I've got uh, blue and red. There's graphics I see even on TV that I wonder who's a graphic artist person because I can't see stuff, you know? Sure. Well, here's, look at this example. I've got text over here <laughs> and on this side, I can't read it, but the text is there. Yeah, okay? well, I can I can barely read either one of them. Yeah, and the reason why is because we read on the black and white spectrum. Mm -hmm. Okay, which means our brain doesn't process contrast between color. It processes contrast on the black and white spectrum. And what's cool about this tool is you can come in here and you can say, well, let's grab a, a color and another color and let's compare them and let's see if the contrast is high enough. For example, I wish I had an example website I could go to. Um, but here's an example where it looks like some people might think this is okay, but it's not. It's incredibly hard to read. So mm -hmm. we have to move things as we move things. We get to a point here as we creating contrast between the two. Well, this is just changing saturation here for the foreground. That's not really what I want to do. Uh, let's go take the background and make it brighter. There we go. Make the foreground and make it darker. And now you can see we're starting mm -hmm. that seven to one contrast ratio. That is uh, means uh, even folks with disabilities can read it easily. Yeah, that's yeah. what we're looking for. Yeah, and that's you know something I've written about al al already and. Uh, I tweet at MSNBC about this all the time with their freaking maps on their on yeah. their on their shows. I go, you know, most of your maps, I can't even see the difference between stuff because I'm colorblind, you know. And you guys need to have some maps that colorblind people can see. Nice. You know? I did not know you were colorblind. Yeah. That's awesome. I don't. I only only like the last year or so have I started talking about it. Um, well, you know, no, I think it's it's actually really good. I so I actually know a couple uh, uh, colorblind developers uh, out there, and uh, and, and since you're colorblind, let's let's talk about color. <laughs> I let's know. do it. It's the, and the toughest thing, and when I talk to people about being colorblind, you know, I consider it a handicap. And actually, I found out recently that it is a handicap in the United States, at least. And um, uh, you know, you work around your handicaps, right? And and one of the ways I've done it, you know, I'm an award-winning photographer. You know, I've won four photography awards and, you know, I'm colorblind, you know, and I don't tell people that because I'm afraid they'll go, oh, well, your stuff sucks because of that. Mm. No, I work around yeah, I get it. That. But, but if, if, if you look at like my website and all that, I do all my own graphics, all my own videos and stuff like that, you know, I stick to the really bolder 
shades of the color because that's what I can see better, right? You know, because I have the, you know, the worst kind of color blind, the red green color blind. So any color with red green, I don't see properly. Yeah. And, so which is a lot of the colors. <laughs> Yeah, no, I totally, I totally, totally get that. So, yeah, we need to have high contrast. Uh, I was right. going to show you this right here. This showed up in uh, a newspaper <laughs> right here. It's a chart uh, showing uh, what? how, uh, <laughs> yeah, what states went for Obama and which ones went for Romney. And based on the chart, all states went for both, <laughs> I know. right? And not only that, but those states, all states also went for Rhode Island, Connecticut, Delaware, and uh, D.C. is what it looks like to me. Right. Um, the on the website in color, right? Yeah. On the website, it looked like this, yeah. which is better. But we still yeah. have an inconsistent use of color by not connecting to these 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 to the actual states over here. What yeah. they effectively did is they said, hey, a blue, a blue square means it's Rhode Island. Right. Or a blue square <laughs> means it's Obama. That's right, true. They, they still yeah. didn't nail it, right? They still yeah. didn't quite get it. Yeah. Um, they had problems there. Let me go grab. Uh, let me hold on a second. Let me see if I can find uh, my slides on color, because um, on color blindness in particular, because it is. Um, we should totally talk about it. There's okay. the slide I want to do right here. Okay, here it is. So color blind users. Um, the greatest uh, defect is the uh, M cone de defect, the greatest percentage, and that's red green. That's the one that you've got, David. Mm -hmm. um, the, there's an L cone defect, there's an S cone defect, and these can happen in combinations. So you can actually get to a point where you do see, you see only in black and white. Okay, yeah. no color vision at all. Notice also the distribution between men and women. About one in ten, a little less than one in ten men, have got color blindness. Uh, but it's like four in uh, in a uh, hundred, right? Or is that right? No, it's four in a thousand for women. Four in a thousand women have mm -hmm. color blindness. So 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 women have got it nailed with regards to color vision compared to men. Um, and uh, and so here is what each of the colors kind of look like based on the different defects if you have normal vision. Mm -hmm. So um, the what 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 happens here now if you have normal vision, uh, Dave the piece that stands out on this is that your reds and your greens, your reds and your oranges and your greens, they kind of are hard to differentiate depending, especially if it's a bright red and for example, a dark green, right? Right. They can be identical and you just can't differentiate them. But on all of these, you can differentiate between red and blue, mm -hmm. right? With all of them. So the takeaway is, you know, stop using red and green Next oh, yeah, here's the, here's the example right there, a bright red and a dark green, right? Um, you just can't differentiate them. Um, right. So uh, use red and blue to differentiate and avoid red and green, If you're especially if you're going to only use color. But the better rule on top of that is never use only color to, as an indicator. Use right. color plus shape, for yes. example, or color plus text uh, as an indicator, something like I've, that. I've tweeted and tweeted and tweeted at Google Maps. You know, Google Maps is so hard for me to see, you know, when it's unless I make have a way to make it super big, you know, it's it's never been easy for me to see. But anyway, we got to wrap it up, man. We're we're uh, like at 50 some minutes now. Shoot, man, that went fast, Mark. Dang. I That's could, me, man. I could I'm like to you for hours. I got to check out your show more often, I guess. Yeah, you well, you can you've got a code rush question, you know, you can show right up in the show. Yeah, yeah. We're actually dog fooding code rush live all of those days, yeah, right? five, yeah. five days a week. So, what that means is if I see a bug or I have a feature request come in, I'll report it right there. I'll put a command in the chat window, and our developers will get an email with a link to that part of the show. So that and they'll get also all my log files as well, right? Sure. So they just get, yeah, it's. It's, it's the sweetest bug reporting mechanism in the world. And it's led to, the, the live show that we do has led to probably, I'd say at least 20 bugs being discovered in, and fixed, wow. right? In that process, right? Where we go through and we're like, you know, whoa, there's an edge case bug right there. Let's look at that, right? What's, what's the, how do we reproduce it, right? So, uh, and I'm, I'm putting in feature requests. If I see anything that doesn't look or feel right, I report it, 
you know, I report it right there into, uh, you know, in the stream. Um, so yeah, if you've got a bug, you can come talk to us about that as well. Same kind of thing right there live. It's like the only thing I know about that does that. Um, yeah. We are, by the way, this is where we are. If you want to see that live show, go to twitch.tv and you can follow me at, co- at twitch.tv forward slash code rushed with an ED at the end right there. ED. Mm-hmm. And we're, we're coding in TypeScript and C Sharp and we're talking about design, uh, coding, uh, you know, all of those things. Uh, and, uh, and we have a great time. It's a really, I, I think it's a really fun show. Um, we're working to give you an example of what we've been working on this week. We're working on fireballs coming out of my hand, special <laughs> effect fireballs. Yeah, no, it, I'm not kidding. You but the, Jeff Fritz. No, these are, these are, but these fireballs, they are virtual. <laughs> so, so what happens is it follow your hand. They follow, they're already following oh. my hand. If <laughs> I turn my hand this way, the fireball is in front of my hand. If I turn it this way, it's behind and you can see it as it goes around. It's a little, and I can throw it and it uses, if, wherever I throw it, it goes. I'm working on catching it right now. That's what I'm working on is catching it. And uh, like I say, you can turn, tune in, watch us live. I'll be back on Tuesday uh, at twitch.tv slash code rushed with an ED at the end. I'm using code rush. I'm inside visual studio and we're, we're, we're doing all kinds of fun things. All right, Mark. Well, and, and I also, before we go, uh, before I let you go, I want to say, you know, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for, you know, allowing me to, uh, give all the readers of my uh, new coding standards book, a free copy of code rush. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you for uh, letting uh, you and, uh, uh, dev express give everybody who watches the show, a copy of code rush. So it's crazy. It's, it's crazy. Free. I don't know. How, I don't Go know how we're get it. It's free. I don't know how we're making any money, kids. We might want to check. You better get it before we change our minds. That's why you moved to Costa Rica. <laughs> That's right. It's That's right. Down there. It's cheaper. <laughs> All right, man. Well, I'll let you go. All and, right. Uh, I hope. I hope this was really fun, and I I want to see you. Yeah, go go go, go to his uh, Twitch channel. Please. Yeah, go go to DevExpress.com. If you want to download Code Rush, go to DevExpress.com forward slash Code Rush. Dave's got your key, your secret magic key, I think, right? Right, yeah. That's right. So, Do that. Yeah, so everybody get a copy. And thank you, Mark. And, uh, you know, thank everybody at DevExpress for all your support through the years. And um, and uh, I hope to have you on soon. This was fun. Sweet. All right. All right. Happy Thanks. to be here. All right. <laughs> Bye-bye. See ya. David, you're muted. Oh, okay. there we go. Sorry. <laughs> can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. You can hear me now? Perfect, perfect. Okay. Sorry about that, everybody. Technical stuff. You know, it's the first time we've done a an interview like this. So uh, I apologize for the couple of glitches in the beginning. And I also apologize for maybe the code was a little tough to uh, read uh, during some of that. You know, Mark goes so fast. It's I think it's hard for the encoder to keep up with him. So we'll try to fix that in post when this uh, video goes up live. Uh, I mean, when it gets posted on uh, uh, YouTube. So um, anyway, I was saying about, you know, Mark, I'm I'm glad I got to watch that again because, you know, Mark uh, talks so fast that um, I have to watch his interviews a couple of times. So uh, maybe because I'm getting older or maybe because he really is a stable genius. Um, Either way, uh, Mark is a great guy to uh, listen to, you know, not only for code, but um, but also for uh, uh, the science of great design. And if any if any of you out there actually write the user experience part, like ASP.NET or or Forms or WPF or something like that, please, please go take his uh, uh, science of great design courses uh, because unfortunately, I don't see enough people with that knowledge. 
And, you know, as you can see, it was just a little bit we talked about with contrast and colors and lines and things like that. It makes a huge difference, you know, not only in, you know, like PowerPoint decks, like for myself, uh, but also for user interface design for you guys. I don't do much user interface design much anymore. Um, I try to stick on the back end. So uh, please go see his, uh, uh, go watch his uh, uh, sessions on uh, great design and, uh, and, and watch him on Twitch. He's, uh, he's great to uh, uh, listen to and follow. And uh, uh, like I said, he's, uh, he's uh, I wish I was as smart as Mark, but anyway. I, I can keep going, but I don't want to give him a big head or something like that, right? So, okay. So, uh, welcome to Mark Davis for winning the C Sharp Corner Swag. All right, Mark Davis is actually the the guy who's the other guitarist on the video that you saw at the very beginning of the show. So, awesome, Mark! I can't wait to. Hey, Mark, when you get that bag of stuff from C uh, Sharp Corner, make sure you post a picture of your your swag and uh, tag me in C Sharp Corner, okay? Um, and, uh, so we have one more contest to do and then we're out of here. Sorry, this went a little bit long and you guys in India, it's a little late for you, but I hope that was worth it. It was definitely worth it to me. Uh, but I hope it was worth it to you too. Um, so here's what we're going to do for the Amazon uh, gift card, the $50 Amazon gift card. Um, if you paid attention to the interview, this should be easy. Okay. Ready? One, two, three. Name one of the free tools that DevExpress allows you guys to download for free right now. Come on. Somebody's got to have it. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Waiting. Come on. Someone's got to type in one of the free tools. I counted four that he mentioned. Name one of the free tools discussed in the interview with Mark Davis. Come on, guys. you got to know this or you were sleeping. Next time you watch my show, you need some coffee or tea, depending where you live in the country. Code Rust Server. Yes, that is one of them. Congratulations. Yay. All right. And uh, also, uh, my, my good friend Mark Davis asked a question I noticed uh, during the... Um, the interview that uh, Mark asked, uh, does everybody need a copy of uh, Code Rush in the development team? And absolutely not. I hope they do, of course. I think all the team members should have it because otherwise you'll be stuck fixing everybody else's code just like me in every job I'm at because in every job I'm at, I'm the only person with these tools because companies just don't get the return on investment. I don't understand. But anyway, um, but yeah, so uh, so uh, congratulations to the winner of, uh, of the $50 Amazon gift card. I wish I had one. I need to buy some guitar stuff um, because that's what I'm doing this afternoon. That's my fun in the afternoons on the weekend as I go play my guitar. And, and maybe one day I'll do a video of me practicing. Does anybody want to see a video of me practicing? Uh, if I see more than five people say yes, I'll record a video of me practicing today and I'll show it on the next show. Okay, come on, we need five people. All right. Well, I'm gonna I'm finish up the show because we're over and I want to go rest. Uh, and uh, so everybody who's watching right now can get a free copy of Code Rush, um, a free licensed copy of Code Rush by going to devexpress.com/slash/donetdave. So. There's absolutely no reason for you not to install it because it's free, okay? And uh, and tell anybody who's bought my Coding Sounders book, they can get a free copy too. So you guys are special since you uh, listen to me spout my stuff about code, all right? So I wanna plug really quick uh, my next uh, book I'm working on, my next new book I'm working on at least, and that's called the Hello World Cookbook. I'm actually cooking a recipe from the book right now as I'm uh, talking to you guys, because uh, I do a lot of slow cooker recipes, and so I'm doing one of my slow cooker recipes today. I already tweeted a, a picture uh, on my Dave McCarter uh, Twitter account. I'll 
post a picture of the final one uh, when it's done in about four hours. But anyway, um, I'm still on the hunt for more recipes for the Hello, Hello World cookbook. I, I need a lot more to release this book. And I hope you guys will please, please help me uh, with this effort because 100% of the proceeds will be donated to the Voice of Slum NGO in India. I visited them last, last year in India in one of the slums in Delhi and it was one of the most moving experiences I've ever had at a conference. And because of that moving experience, I've, uh, I've all the proceeds from my um, uh, uh, performance book goes to them. And now I want to make even more money for the NGO by doing a cookbook that anybody can use. But it's a cookbook uh, from recipes from geeks just like you and me. So no matter what country you're in, I want to see your recipes. Um, please send them to me ASAP. Um, I love Indian food. So you people in India, please send me your recipes because, you know, because I couldn't visit you this year, you know, I'm really missing you guys. So I I cook uh, my chicken curry recipe every once in a while. It reminds me of, uh, you know, being in Delhi and visiting you all. And uh, so I miss you. So send me your recipes. And uh, if you're not a cook, um, then you can also sign up. You go to the website. You can also sign up to be a unit tester for the recipes. You can sign up to do graphic arts uh, for the recipes. You can sign up to be an editor of the recipes because uh, I suck at English. And so there's lots of ways you can help. And if you don't want to do any of that, please go to the voice of slum. Uh, dot org and just donate directly because they need your help, uh, especially in this uh, pandemic we're dealing with right now. Okay. So thanks for watching. I'm still working on the guests uh, for next week, but it'll be a good one. I have a couple in the works right now and we'll announce that as soon as I get one. Um, you know, now that we're going into the holidays, I think it's going to be a little bit harder uh, to nail down guests on a weekend. So, uh, but I'm working on it. We'll have a guest next, next week for sure. Um, also this week, I uh, did a new article in C-Sharp Corner called Coding Faster with .NET Tips Utility, uh, my November 2020 update. Uh, so I've just released the brand new uh, version of my, of my open source projects and my NuGet packages. So I hope you go to C-Sharp Corner, I read the article, and you can download the source code. You can download the NuGet packages. Easy, easy. Um, also, again, please be safe. We're not over the pandemic. The pandemic's not close to being done. So please be safe. Please wear your masks. You know, here in America, we've, uh, this week, we've hit record highs almost every day, um, which is really sad. And uh, so no matter what country you're in, you're in, please listen to your science and medical professionals, because I want to see you back here next week on another episode of Rockin' the Cold World with Donna Dave. I'll see you next week.